You know, we in the hockey media always want to give credit where credit is due, and I'd like to say thank you to uh, the several thousand people that have been listening to my podcast on the Wayne Mackey, Ted Green incident. Some people have posted he didn't like Ted Green too much. Others that basically said uh, Green may have deserved it. It's not for me to say. I was only six years old when the incident occurred. It was a preseason game. Teddy Green was a rough player. There wasn't really any feuding uh, going on between Mackey and Green before the incident. It was unfortunate, but again, the NHL and the, the, the Canadian federal government really, really took a hard look at violence in hockey because of this, because Green almost died, and uh, rules were changed, uh, I think, for the better. But in this podcast, we're going to talk about the other historical aspects of Wayne Mackey that a lot of people might know and might not know. Now, can I ask you a trivia question? What's Wayne Mackey's major connection with Guy Lafleur? Well, according to the province, an uh, article that Patrick Johnson did November uh, 14, 2019, with Destiny, Wayne Mackey's widow, she argues that Mackey's performance in a game against the California Seals was the last nail in the coffin that allowed Montreal to draft Guy Lafleur all the way back in 1971 because the, the loss, which Mackey was a big force for Vancouver in that victory, put the Seals in the last place position, which again allowed Montreal to take Guy Lafleur. Now, According to the, the writer, I'm just quoting from the article, there are three things to know about March 28, 71. It was the first time he connects more to score to more 10 goals in a game, and it was a night that confirmed that the Montreal Canadiens would be drafted first of all in that year's amateur draft, and it was the best night of the talented Wayne Mackey's short career because he died of brain cancer in the mid-1970s. Now, when the Canucks won 11-5 that night, Mackey scored three goals for his only hat-trick in his career. Now, again, by the defeat, the Golden Seals guaranteed that we finished last in the league. Now, the loss would have given the first overall pick, but because they had traded the pick away to Montreal, Montreal got it. Now, how the Canadians found themselves in the position of the Seals' first-round pick was simple. The, the genius GM for Montreal, Sam Pollock, made a bet in May 1970 that California would be the league's worst team in 71 and let uh, kind of a third-line prospect, Ernie Hickey, plus one of Montreal's three first-round picks in the 70 amateur draft, which was used to select, of all people, Chris Odelson, who would later go on to play in captain the Canucks, in exchange for the Seals' first pick in 71, plus one Francis Lacombe, a decent defenseman would go on to play in the WHA for several years. Now, Pollock had written the 67 expansion draft rules and came to understand before just about anyone else how the draft could be mined to find future stars. Now, Lafleur and Dion were seen as the best prospects for the 71 draft, even a year away. Uh, Lafleur called Le Demo Blonde, or the, the Blonde Demon, was the guy Pollock really wanted because of his great player with the Quebec Grand Power and probably the best Quebec prospect since literally Jean Beliveau. And uh, they got him partly because the great Wayne Mackey sealed their fate. Now, uh, excuse me, I call her De uh, Destiny. My apologies, Beverly. Excuse me, uh, my apologies to Beverly. Uh, sorry about that. Now, according to Beverly, sorry for that, he loved the play, said this week from her home in West Vancouver. There were seven other kids in a family, six and her brothers. I guess he had to fight for everything. Now, Mackey had been a Chicago Blackhawks minor leaguer before St. Louis picked him up for a cup of coffee in 1970. The Canucks picked him up in the 70 expansion draft, and he found him home. Now, at uh, one point, he played on the Canucks' first line alongside Arnold Curtinback and Murray Hall, tallying, tallying 33, 63 points in 78 games. Now, his older brother, the talented Chico Mackey, played for Blackhawks for years, said he, his brother was a good skater with a hell of a shot. He wasn't afraid to take on the big guys. He fought them like, uh, not like some guys. Now, great, uh, the great Connects, uh, Connects broadcaster Jim Robson recalled he had guts. Unfortunately, sometimes you're always remembered for only one thing. Now, why would St. Louis the season before, again, Mackey got involved in a preseason six-wing incident where Bruins tough guy Ted Green that sent Green to the hospital with a fractured skull. In the incident, Green swung at Mackey, missed Mackey's... Uh, swing hit the mark and Green went down like a sack of potatoes and uh, you know I guess the incident 
there was no video about it. He was, I guess, convulsing on the ice. Now, Green would miss the entire 1970 season, but return in time to face Mackey and his new team the next year. Now, Robinson said, Ted Green was a rough player, but he would spear guys and he had speared Mackey. Mackey swung his stick back to defend himself. Now, a lot of people have posted on uh, my podcast about that. I'm not one to say, to say, to say because I didn't see much of Ted Green play, but for what I heard, and there was some person that also said that Bobby Orr took a swing at Mackey at that incident as well. Now, if Bobby Orr would have connected, that would have been beyond to beyond because Bobby Orr was known to be dirty at the time. He was sort of the virgin back then, not like the Trump supporter, that uh, what he called the lost boss of Bruin of 2021. Now, Again, both player, both Mackey and Green were charged with assault, but both were acquitted and both were suspended by the league. Now, Robson said the first time we went into Boston, man, did he run him hard? He really ran him hard. Unfortunately, they they remember him for that. Now, Mackey had dealt with health problems since he was a kid, but the, side, the sudden diagnosis of a brain tumor, his final season of '73 with the Canucks at age 28, still came in a shock. Now he was stricken with debilitating headaches. He was sent home for a mid-season road trip. Doctors in Vancouver discovered a cancerous growth, gave him six months to live, and quickly operated to remove the tumor. He fought back and lived for another 17 months. Beverly said uh, in the article, even though he was sick and dying, he just he just uh, loved life. He loved the golf. He loved his family. He loved his neighbors. Now, after he passed away, Beverly and her two kids, Stephanie and Wayne Jr., started receiving all kinds of gifts and letters from fans. The Canucks alumni helped out in the years that followed, both with funds for Stephanie and Wayne's education, and Stephanie went on to be a school teacher, Wayne a chef, chef, and helped in removing, uh, renovating uh, her house. Now, uh, his number his number was retired by Vancouver. Was brought back with permission when Mark Messier uh, started playing with Vancouver. Now, according to Beverly, two gifts from the fans stands out: portraits of Wayne in his Canucks uniform, one crocheted, the other in needlepoint. Now, Beverly has no idea who made them, but he remained treasured items. I framed them right away and hung them on a wall. And she said in the write-up, I'm looking at it right now, actually. It was very touching. As for the connection between Wayne's greatest game and Montreal's good good fortune, she knew that one very well. I do think it was destiny, she said. It's karma. Sorry about saying she was called destiny, but uh, I apologize. Uh, the, the province did a whole series of articles on the 50th anniversary of the Canucks in 2019. Province, one of the best newspapers in the world. Check out the site, and I uh, give all attribution to this to present the information. Now, one last thing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the reason why the Wayne Mackey Ted Green podcast has been charting in recent months because of the Wilson incidents in recent weeks. But again, Will Paymont, Boom Boom Jeffrey, uh, uh, different players, the Dave Brown incident, incidents involving Chrissy Nile and Claude Lemieux. Six wing and, and, and negative play have happened. Uh, Mark Surly against Brashear, of course. The, uh, the, the Bertuzzi with the Vancouver incident when he jumped the player. Hockey's a rough game, ladies and gentlemen. But again, the Gladiator Mackey versus Green. Green probably thought that Mackey was going to back down. But usually with most prospects of the late 1960s who came up to the strong uh, minor league and uh, minor pro associations, they wouldn't back down. Wayne was a very, very talented young player. Uh, I saw him play to work before he passed away. Very smooth, sort of like a combination of Yvonne Lambert, a little bit of Rajon Hull, and of all people, a little bit like Boudreaux. Boudreaux and Mackey had very uh, uh, prominent styles together. But if he would have lived, he could have easily, uh, you know, helped Vancouver to a Stanley Cup in the early 1980s. He was that good. He was quite young when he passed away, and he would have obviously been around for that uh, playoff run uh, that led to Vancouver to the finals. And when uh, Vancouver made it, every all the thoughts of the Vancouver fans, and I'm one of them, I've always been uh, uh, positive towards Vancouver, the thought of Wayne Mackey. And people, you know, like Gary Smith, people uh, like... Uh, uh, John Gould, uh, Don Lever, all these players, you know, the, the Vancouver uh, fan base is very, very loyal. They're sort of like the closest thing that we have encountered to the Montreal Canadiens fan base. And this is why, because the Vancouver Canuck name goes way back in WHL as well. And Vancouver has always been a great place for sports, BC Lines, everything else. And uh, 
But ladies and gentlemen, Wayne Mackey's uh, early passing and the incident with Teddy Green, unfortunate. But uh, the family, the Mackey family can always say, you know, we put the last nail in the coffin that got help Montreal get Guy Lafleur. And uh, I don't know who to blame about the Seals losing their pick. Was it Sam Pollock? I mean, no offense to Mr. Hickey, but you could have got anybody else because Montreal had a lot of draft players. They, had, they could have got Jerry Dertrandam, my old nemesis that I've talked about before. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we do with our Vintage NHL podcast, let us know. Give us a like, comment, subscribe. I love the comments on the Wayne Mackey, Ted Green incident, keeping them coming, because a shared history is a history remembered, as we like to say. Have a good evening. Bye.